So we're out here on the field right now with Canaan Officer Juan Heron. How are you, brother? Doing good. Good to see you. Now, these guys, they're getting ready to start their setup. Um, it's hot out here. Yes, it is. It is hot. I just I just got here, started walking around. I'm already starting to sweat. Now, I noticed that you guys have these boxes out here, and you're going to utilize these boxes and put someone in it. Yes, we are. Well, these boxes, these are our hot boxes that we use to train our dogs, and we're about to certify with our dogs. Basically, we have about six of these boxes out here. And what we do here is mostly hide an individual in here. And basically, our dogs go around and locating and sniffing every box until we find and locate what we call a subject. Bad guy's in there, subject's in there. Dog goes in and engages the bad guy. There's different types of things we use. Probably we'll call the bad guy out or recall our dogs back. Oh, you gotta keep him in there. I gotta keep him in there. You gotta stay hot. <laughs> we have everybody go in the box. Heat it up for 30 seconds and they all come out except for the one that the, the subject's gonna be in. Then he goes in, he stays there for another 30 seconds and we start deploying the dog. So the dog knows the difference between residual order, if a bad guy's jumping around from place to place, and the actual location where the bad guy is at. Exactly, when I was out there on the street before coming to this unit, right. you guys you know, had those dogs really on point. It was amazing, especially when I was in PST, that we couldn't find the narcotics. You brought the canine out and Within it's, a couple the, seconds, it was the, already there. The canine's nose is about 25 million times stronger than, than our human nose. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it's so strong, say you're cooking a um, a gumbo, mm -hmm. and you you smell it, you smell the gumbo and, and, and all the essence and all of it mm -hmm. together, but the dog smells every different ingredient separately. Oh, wow. He breaks down all the components and tells you all the, if he could talk, he'll tell you, this is salt, that's pepper, it has all this, it breaks oh, it down. that's back. interesting. Yeah, even when we do narcotics, we use the main component and, and the cocaine and the mm -hmm. heroin, and that's what we do. We have certain type of training aids that we have, and they use that main component. Mm. And that's how strong their nose is, and which in turn helps out a lot when it comes to finding and locating uh, uh -huh. uh, you know, felons. That's why our dogs sniff so much when we go home. Exactly. They're like, where have you been all day? <laughs> where have you been? <laughs> You've right. been cheating on me. Yeah, right? <laughs> but do you think this box here is uh, is heated up it's enough? It's heated up enough. Is it, is it hot in there already? It's cooking. Yeah, it's cooking. <laughs> I think we can let Officer Rios out. I think Thank it's you, good. Thank you, Officer Rios. <sighs> So the elements are grueling. They're out here training a lot. It's a lot of hard work. These guys, they're just about to come out now. So I got to get out of the way. They got to finish setting up. So I'm going to let you get back to it. You got it. All right, Thank brother. you, John. Have see a you later. One. Let me see if I can catch Ronald before he goes in real quick. I noticed one of the canines just came out. Hey, Ronald, hold on a second. What's up, man? I uh, noticed we got somebody out here. Really. Well, this is Officer um, Santiago, and this is Canine Yadik. Usually this is our canine team. When we talk to each other about our canine team, we usually call each other by our dog's name. So when we say Yadik, we mean both of them. I think he likes the windscreen. <laughs> All right, I hope my audio is working. I thought Yadik was just gonna sniff the mic. He wound up taking the whole thing off. <laughs> Got him! Before, before the mic came off, what breed is he? He's a four and a half year old Belgian Malinois. Well, real quick, let me ask you, uh, before you guys set up, you think I can see some of the obedience oh, training of real quick? Let's see, let's see some of the obedience. So what is he doing Stop right now? There. Why is his head up like that? Well, it's what we call a paso fino. Can I, what we want is, can I come around Yeah, him? yeah, yeah, he's fine. He has good control. What we want is the dog to always be looking up at the handler. Uh, so, so basically, we hold, hold that control there. That whole, it caps the dog's drive a lot, and it helps us maintain that obedience. We'll hold that control for a moment before we start every exercise we do. All right, so what will be the, the next form of obedience that you guys have? Well, right now we're gonna go ahead and he's gonna start healing. Left turn. 
He waits for me to start calling out the other calls. Left about. You leave your dog on the, on the down. Walk around your dog. Go back around and pick him up. Right about. Leave your dog on the stand. Go around your dog. Pick him up. You're gonna do a left about and leave him there to sit. Now it's called a halfway. He's gonna call his dog, and halfway there, he's gonna give him a command. You're gonna call your dog by voice and down him by hand. Okay. You your dog, please. And obviously, for Yadik doing a good job, he gets rewarded with a toy, which he loves so much. It's just like having kids, you gotta discipline them, but you also gotta show them love. But at the end, we always give them a reward. Reward is the, the key to everything. You know, before I got to this facility, they were over in another location. So, right. So the, the lieutenant is kind enough to, to hold the class from continuing the, the boxes so we can get a little preview of what they were doing before. Correct, correct. So this was the article? This is the article portion of the exam that we have. Basically the articles, like for example, if somebody runs from the police and drops a gun, drops a credit card, drops a wallet, they go ahead and call K-9. This is what we call an article search. And that's when we come around, start locating the articles. So right now, uh, Officer Manny Bale is gonna use K-9 Jedi to locate the three articles that were placed on the floor. It has, the articles have still some type of human order on it. And that's what the dog is searching for. It's all grass, and what's different in the grass is the human order. And that's what the dog knows. Again, it goes down to human order and the dog using his nose. Can I Jedi is a, a retrieve. So as you can see, he has it in his mouth. He's taking it, bringing it back to his handler. Handler retrieves it. Show him at it. He retrieves the credit card and he rewards the dog. Food is another reward system that we use. And as you can see, you've got four officers in every corner. The dog knows that he should not leave the whole, this little box, per se. Wow. If you notice, he hasn't left on the outside. They're allowed to leave a little bit, but not too much. But as you can see, the four officers are here except for that. That turn ahead usually means something's there. And he's searching. Wow. That, that's what we call a change of behavior. So Officer Koyasu, you are the training instructor for the canine, right? Correct. So I'll let you go ahead, explain this a little more to the audience so they can know what's going on today. All right, so obviously you have to come into the canine unit and once you get here, you get a dog that's issued to you and you have to go through a basic 480 utility class with your partner. Once that is done, then annually we certify in what we call USPCA, which is United States uh, Police Canine Association. So that is what you're gonna see here today. There's five different things that is a part of that certification. You have the obedience, which obviously shows and demonstrates that we have control over our dogs and they are obedient to our hand, voice, and through leash control. And then we have the agility portion. The third thing is the box search, which is where we actually hide a suspect in. And this is the beginning phases of actually teaching the dog to look for a human and actually detail boxes, which you'll see that there's slits on the box. Um, after that, you have articles. After that, then we have criminal apprehension, which is our bite work. So obviously there we demonstrate that the dog does not go out until we give them the command. The dog must return uh, as the decoy is surrendering. And then also, if the canine needs to make an apprehension, they will do so. We also do that phase under gunfire, so that you see the dogs are acclimated to the gunfire and they have no problem performing under gunfire. Again, we do this annually, and this is the way we show that our dogs have a high performance and we have them under control. So the officers right now are getting ready to start their boxers. They have to heat up the boxes first. 
Okay, QSL, go around the corner because you can see us right now. So just go around the corner and uh, we'll be ready for you. Your first dog up. We're just airing out the boxes. So now you see this is the actual decoy that's coming in and he's gonna be put into one of these boxes. So essentially what we've done is we've heated up all these boxes. We air them out for a little bit because obviously the box will retain our odors and there'll still be a little bit of residual odor in there. And the dog must distinguish between residual odor versus an actual person being in the box. But if you want, and you can watch everything okay. or out there, whatever better angle you have. So they just finished airing out the box. I need to get off the field because they're going to bring the canine out. Once the canine is loose, they might mistake me for one of the subjects. So I don't have any protective gear. I need to get off the field and we'll get some action of that in a moment. Pizza. Hey, how are you? So I got the slice of pizza. I'm gonna get out of there. They're having a meeting. Now that second phase of the day is gonna be bite training. So we'll catch up with them when they finish. So let me ask you, are you gonna be the one to slide the shoes today? No, we're all gonna decoy today. Also, oh, everybody gets a roll. Yes, sir. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm close. I was like, ah! Look at my second. Do you want it? You got it? Wait, wait. Oh, no. Do you want it? Oh, Excuse me. Oh, I just got more. Is that the actual sleeve that the dog's by? It's like, no. No, this is the protecting uh, for your arm. This is the, the sleeve that you'll bite right here. Pick it up, are you not? So there should always be three dogs ready to go. One is being hauled out and two is 
processing area. Uh, no, you're going to come in this way. You're not going to come down the hallway. Officer Bella, how are you? Good, good. How are you, sir? I see you setting up the cones, man. Tell yes. Me, uh, how is this set up? Okay, each cone represents something. That cone over there start, is your starting point. This right here is where the judge is going to stand. And once the dog passes, uh, the judge is going to give a, a signal saying that the dog has passed the 50 feet. At which point, you are to recall your dog. From this point to that cone to get the maximum points. He could recall a little further, but you'll get deducted some minimum points. Once the dog recalls, he must come back and come to a finish and heal next to you. Also, when you send your dog on what we call a straight, on an on a, on a apprehension, you're not allowed to leave the, the cone area until your dog clears this and the judge gives you the signal. Then it's, it's okay for you to run towards your dog and then they'll call your number and that'll let you know that they've seen enough of the uh, bite of the dog and you are able to out your dog, call them to a finish, at which point you're gonna down your dog and then you're gonna do a pat down. All right, Seth, so can you do us a favor and give us a rundown of the last phase that we just saw take place? Yeah, that's our criminal apprehension portion. And basically what that is, is you have a false start, which is the decoy goes, and the dog is not supposed to move until the handler tells him to do so. The second time is a recall, where the, the decoy will move again, and the dog is sent out, and then halfway he is told to come back and finish at the handler's side. And then the final is the dog is allowed to go make the apprehension. He's told then to out, come to the handler side, and then we do a handler protection, which is you see the, the handler patting down the decoy and the dog must stay and, and maintain uh, control. So let me ask you a question. You said out. Is that the English out or a different language out? <laughs> the out is the dog is, he verbally, or, oh my God. That thing so out. if I was your dog, <laughs> you're my handler, how do you say it? So there's different commands, right? Uh -huh. You have in, in Dutch, and you can say los is uh -huh. his command. He outs, and then mm -hmm. he comes back to the handler. Ah, uh, okay. So you guys have different languages for the different right. dogs, too. You have Dutch, you have German, mm -hmm. you have Czech, all, all right. different languages. So which language is your dog? Dutch. Dutch. Okay, cool. And you have a, a Malinois? Yes. Nice, nice. So now I see that we have the canine officers. They're going back and forth. Now they're doing a different drill. They got gunshots involved. This one's a little more intense. Can you tell us about that one? Obviously, we uh, work on the streets, and these are police dogs, and they're there for our protection and for other officers and the civilians. So we need to make sure that our dogs are able to handle gunfire. And again, with that stress of the gunfire, they still are able to be to be maintained under control. So they they are allowed to be released for the apprehension, but still have to have that control. Where when we tell them to release the bite, which is the out, they release the bite, and then they're called back to us. Okay, so they already went through. 
So they already went through one series of apprehensions, yes. uh, the bike for apprehension, and now this is to make sure that they're able to have um, a sense of uh, control when things start to get a little bit more out of control. And then in this drill, the decoy will actually push the handler, which simulates that the offender is fighting the officer, so then the dog will deploy to the offender. So, so the training, you have to also make sure that part of the canine training is that that dog always maintains a visual on its on its uh, master, on the, on the canine handler. Yeah. All right. All right, guys, so let's go ahead, let's check it out. Let's see what they're doing now. Before we head over there, we're going to go ahead and check out one of the canines behind the scenes. I'm here with Officer Herbello. Oh, yeah. How you doing? Oh, man, we got one coming out already. <laughs> What's the name of this canine? His name is Canine Thor with the Miami Beach Police Department. It's about three years old and weighs about 96 pounds. Wow. What breed Dutch is Shepherd. he? He's a Dutch Shepherd. A Dutch Shepherd. I notice he has a different uh, different markings on his coat. Yeah, this is called a brindle coat where you see kind of like the uh, light and dark spots that go throughout his body. He's uh, he's definitely special. I don't think he likes the windscreen on top <laughs> no, of my microphone. So. <laughs> All right, man. Appreciate Best it. Best of luck to you, brother. You got it. Thank you. All right, so let me ask you, what kind of canine do you have? I have a Belgian Malinois. Mm -hmm. He's uh, four years old. He weighs 58 pounds. He's really social. He's, uh, he's such a joy to work with. And uh, I mean, I spend more time with him than anyone in my family. So this is him. This is Canine Vader. What's his name? Canine oh. Vader, like Star Wars. All right, hey buddy. He's super social. You guys have different kind of of leashes around his neck. This is uh this is what's called a, a flat collar, right here, and uh, it's just a basic canine collar. And this is a uh, what we call a pinch collar, just to uh, kind of an obedience collar. And and, and that will pinches the back of the neck, right? Correct. And uh, this is a e collar, and uh, we we just we use all of them for different things and. Uh, so now the pinch collar, from from what I understand, that basically emulates the the mother when she would grab the pups, right? Correct. Correct. How does that work? Well, I could offer direction here, so you see, I could I could move them, push, and then if I need them to move back, I could just hit it backwards, you know, sit. I can move them up like that or down, you know, and it, and and it just gives them direction really on what is required. So if I want them to sit, I could just, and he takes a little seat right there, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like that. If you want him to down, you could just push it down on the pinch. And what language does he understand? He is half and half. He has German and he has Dutch. So he has Dutch commands and German commands. Does he, does does he the, ever get confused or you have to keep <laughs> certain commands? No, for each, certain, uh, each command is different. So it's not, it's not like I have, if, if I want him to sit down, it's not like I use a German command and a Dutch command. It's just I have a Dutch command, let's say for instance a stand. I would have Dutch. My sit is German. My my out command will be Dutch. That's good because that keeps the confusion out of the animal. It's just one command per language. Yes. All right. Yes. All right. Well, I'm gonna let you get back to it. I know you guys have a lot of a lot of things going on yes. there, man. Thanks for taking the time. Appreciate you, my brother. I must say it feels good to be indoors. It is very hot outside. I definitely tip my hat to these canine guys. It is a lot of work that these guys put into the animals. You know, they suffer bites sometimes from the from the actual playing of role of the decoy. You know, 
that's a very, very thin material that they have. And sometimes the teeth, you know, go through it just a little bit and the pressure is a little bit too much. So, you know, they do get a little injured here, but they suck it up and keep on going. Right now we're waiting for them to do a certification presentation. It was a competition as well. So let's uh, just hang out with them for a little. Let's see uh, what's going on. It looks like we have uh, Officer Heron in here actually. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, doing good, doing good. Here, putting some equipment away, man. There's a lot of this equipment here for different scenarios, different things, different situations. So it's a lot of training, a lot of stuff. For the most part, we have equipment for the, the dog itself. We don't, we kind of provide all the handlers and all the dogs, every, any, anything they need. And again, some of the safety equipment that we have, safety is paramount. And oh, this is what we saw earlier Yeah, this today. is the hard sleeves that we were using earlier. We have the Belgium sleeves, which are softer. Uh, we have other sleeves here. We have muzzles, helmets for the decoys, depending on what kind of scenario we have working for their safety. Oh, wow. And we even have hand grips for them. So it depends on the scenario again. We got fake arms if you need it. <laughs> we got fake legs. Now, what, what would the use of a fake arm? The be? fake arm will be, the fake arm could be used for different things. For example, also just how we want to peel off the dog off of equipment order. So we'll use the fake arm. The the person will have it on. It'll be strapped on to him, as so, and the dog will probably just engage this fake arm, and we rip it off, and the dog takes the fake arm as a reward. Oh wow. So just to clarify, you're not teaching the canines to rip off people's arms, are no, you? No, sir. No, sir. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> no, sir. Not I don't at all. want you guys yes. to misinterpret what he's <laughs> saying. All right. Well, we had Officer Horon give us a, a little explanation earlier in the day. Now we have him here. We're going to go hang out. Yes, but before we, we do, I'm going to sign off just in case if I got to run out of here because I don't know how long it's yeah. going to take for those awards to come through. Yes, so. Sir. Well, it looks like the results came in. I wasn't sure how long it was going to take, so we're going to go to the roll call room and see who won first, second, and third place in this competition. Let's check them out. They've done a great job. Let's see who the winners are. Score 684.68. Third place, Valero Suarez. Thank you, thank you so much. I didn't do too bad on it. Thank you. No, not too bad. Good job. Thank you. Second place, with a score of 686.83, Manuel Santiago. Not a surprise. In first place with a score of 692.34 out of 700. John Marin. It's a video. I could, I could. Yeah. Appreciate the hospitality you've shown us. I spent 26 years in canine, and there's nothing like being around a bunch of canine guys. You guys bust chops better than anybody I've ever been around. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to the judges. Obviously, you guys have been here all day. You've been very thorough. You've been very approachable. You've explained yourself in the way you do it. Thank you for coming down. I know the heat is unbearable. You guys rode it out the whole way. No complaints. Really, thank you. Uh, on behalf of everybody, thank you guys. Appreciate it. The person who spearheaded this and put most of this together and always puts countless hours and obviously the backbone of the unit, Stephanie. Thank you. Yeah. 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 That's all we got, fellas. Have a good day. Yeah. So, day's officially over. They did a great job. Much respect to all of them. So as always guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Have a good one.